So the next thing to talk about is induced norms. Um, basically, the idea is that we can associate matrix norms with vector norms through this notion of induced norms. So I'll define it here. So let be a vector norm. on c to the n. So I'm taking complex. Like I said, a lot of the results here are applicable to complex as well. So I may go back and forth between these two. And where it's really required to make a distinction, I'll tell you the difference. Um, define on c to the n cross n as Okay, so you take that norm, and if I compute that norm on the vector AX and take its maximum over all vectors which have a unit norm according to this vector norm, I'll define that to be this with three bars, this function with three bars on the matrix A. Okay, and uh, so this is defined as the induced norm. So this is the... So... So it's, uh, I'll just put it in double quotes because I haven't really formally stated this yet. So this is the matrix norm induced by the vector norm So this is the basic definition of an in induced norm. Okay. Um, so one thing you can immediately note is that um, if I scale x by some constant c, then the norm ax scales by the constant c, and the norm of x also scales by the same constant c. Um, another thing is that I'm trying to maximize this norm AX over all X such that norm X equals 1. I can as well maximize this over all X such that norm X is less than or equal to 1 because if there is some vector that solves, so let me write that here so that I can explain more clearly. Note is equal to max over all X such that X less than or equal to 1 of norm AX. That's because suppose you solve this problem and it gives you a solution for which norm of X is strictly less than 1. Then what I can do is I can scale that X by a factor which is greater than 1. Then the norm will be, may, may become equal to 1. But then when I scale that X by some factor greater than 1, then this norm of AX will also scale by a factor greater than 1. And since both, and, and that will only increase its value. So basically what that means is that the solution to this optimization problem will always occur at an X such that norm of X equals 1. So there is no loss uh, or no harm if I include a whole bunch of other points which are inside the unit circle according to this norm. Because those points will never be the so solution to, to this problem. And this in turn can be written as the max over all x not equal to 0 of norm Ax over norm x. Okay, this quantity itself doesn't change if you scale x. So I can as well maximize norm Ax over norm x over all x not equal to 0. And finally, I can also, instead of maximizing over all x not equal to 0, I can also maximize over all x such that norm of x according to some notion of norm, I'll call it x alpha, equal to 1 of norm ax over norm x. 
So different ways of writing this. Um, is any vector norm. So there are different ways of writing it, but they all uh, give you the same answer, which is what we are calling norm of A. So I've, I've been calling it the norm of A, but actually we need to show that. So the theorem is that the function defined above is a matrix norm. Okay. Um, on C to the N cross N and norm ax so this is a vector so this norm here is the vector norm that induced this this quantity here with three bars um, this is less than or equal to the norm of a times the vector norm of x for every a and x in c to the n. So pick any vector. Uh, this norm of a is actually an upper bound on norm of ax divided by norm of x. If x equals 0, this is 0 and this is also 0. So it holds when x equals 0 as well. Also, the norm of the identity matrix equals 1. So remember previously we had said that the norm of an identity of the identity matrix is greater than or equal to one for uh, any vector norm, uh, any matrix norm. That's because the norm of i squared is less than or equal to norm of i times the norm of i, and uh, therefore, uh, but i squared equals i, and therefore uh, norm of i is greater than or equal to one for the identity matrix I. For uh, for these kind of norms, induced norms, uh, norm of I equals one, okay? This is also known as, say, so this is called induced norm or operator norm. So I'll just write that here. Uh, sir, this definition okay. of induced norm is valid, valid for all type of vector norm? Yes. And sir, uh, can you please explain that node part again? I, I, I could not understand that uh, why this max of norm of x less than or equal to 1 should be equal to uh, norm of a. So the, uh, so the, by definition, this is the max over all norm x, all vectors x such that norm x equals 1. Okay, and I have to find this norm ax. I, I search over all vectors which have unit norm and find the vector that maximizes the norm of ax. Now, instead of searching over all vectors x such that norm of x equals 1, suppose I search over all vectors for which norm of x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, that includes, so I, I guess, first of all, a very intuitive and simple way of thinking about it is, suppose I consider the this norm to be the L2 norm then basically when I say norm x equals 1, I'm asking you to search over points lying on this circle. Okay, and A is some matrix. And among all the points on this circle, I'm asking you which point maximizes norm Ax. Then basically as you go further and further out on this circle, this norm of Ax will also increase. So if I take a point x here, versus a point x here, the norm of Ax over here will be bigger than the norm of Ax over here if these are on the same line, the same direction. So if, uh, for example, when you solve this problem, if you get an, if you, if you say my solution is some particular x hash, 
such that norm of x hash is equal to some value say b which is less than 1 okay so then this the maximum is happening at an interior point then um, then what i can do is i can propose a better solution i can say my solution is x dagger which is equal to your 1 over b times x hash If I do this, then if I look at what happens to basically norm of AX, this is equal to 1 over B times norm of AX hash. So whatever maximum you found, I'm able to find a, 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 an X, X dagger. Notice that this also satisfies my constraint. is actually equal to 1 over b times the norm of x hash which is equal to b and so this is equal to 1. Okay, so this satisfies the constraint that norm of x should be less than or equal to 1 but the value of the objective function a x dagger is going to be strictly greater than a x dagger itself. So whatever solution you found, I am able to find a solution that beats your solution. It achieves a higher maximum. And as a consequence of that, the solution to this problem will always occur at a point where norm of x equals 1. And so you don't lose anything by saying I'll maximize over all x such that norm x is less than or equal to 1. It will always give you the same solution as the earlier optimization problem. Also, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I don't have to restrict to x less than or equal to 1. I can maximize over all x not equal to 0 by simply including norm x and the denominator of this objective function. That is the idea. Okay, so this is the theorem. So basically, whatever we defined earlier is in fact a matrix norm. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's check this. So again, we need to verify non-negativity, positivity, homogeneity, triangle inequality, and submultiplicativity. Okay. Now, um, obviously, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, some of places matrix norm is with double bars, and some places with triple bars. So, could you explain that? It's always with triple bars, except when I was giving a couple of examples here. Okay, and I all somebody else already asked the question. I suppose you weren't paying attention, and I explained that I'm going to use a different. I'm going to define the L2 norm of A with three bars in a different way, and so I'm saving the triple bar here um, for that purpose. And so here this A L1 and A L2 I have defined with two bars because I'm going to use a different. Uh, I'm going to define a different norm for the L1 norm and L2 norm. Okay, otherwise matrix norms are with triple bars. Okay, sir. Okay, so now um, these are the four properties. So first we'll take non-negativity. So obviously by definition, the norm of A is the maximum of a non-negative quantity. This norm of AX, this is a vector norm and it's a non-negative quantity. So when I take the maximum of a non-negative quantity, I cannot suddenly get a negative quantity. So it is non-negative. The positivity is because the um, this norm of A will be equal to zero if and only if A x equals zero for all x, uh, x not equal to zero. So for that, if you the simplest way is to consider this 
version of writing out norm A is the maximum over all x not equal to 0 of norm A ax over norm x. So for this maximum value to be equal to 0, the value itself must be equal to 0 for all x. Now, um, if if norm A has to be, if, if, no, if, uh, if norm of AX is 0 for all X, it means that AX itself, this is a vector norm. It means AX equals 0 for all X. So, and this is true if and only if A is equal to 0. Why is that true? Why should AX equal 0 for all X mean that A is equal to 0? Positivity, pro pro positivity property of the vector norm, sir. No, there is no norm here. I'm just saying that a matrix A is such that if I find AX, it, it gives me the 0 vector for all X. And I'm saying I'm we can express the columns of the we can express the columns of the uh, matrix as the um, transformation of the basis elements. I don't follow that. Any matrix, uh, if we add the matrix on the uh, basis elements, then uh, we'll get the columns of the matrix. And if all of them are zero, then the matrix will be zero. So you are saying that you want you want to think of a of a basis uh, in say uh, C to the n, and you want to project the columns of the matrix on this basis, and yes. from that somehow conclude that a x equals zero means a equals zero. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I I can think of a simpler way of saying that. So suppose so range, I range space of a uh, zero means a zero always. Yeah, that's uh, so. I'm asking why is that true? Um, and so one very simple way to see that is that if I take x equals the vector one zero 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 zero, then what that will do is to pull out the first column of a. Since a x equals zero for all x, it's also true for this vector 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That means that the first column of A must be 0. Next, if I consider x equals 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, that, will, that AX for such a vector will be equal to the column A2. But that's also equal to 0. So the second column is also equal to 0 and so on. So if AX equals 0 for all X, then A is equal to 0. Similarly, I mean, the, the contrary is trivial because if A is equal to 0, then of course AX is equal to 0 for all X. Yes, sir. So I mean, the same, uh, same proof. Yeah. So the next property is homogeneity. So we need to show that. So if, uh, if I consider the norm of C times this matrix A, this is equal to the max of, so I won't write the constraint here because it's just repetitive. It's the same constraint, x uh, norm of x equals 1. So I won't write that. C A X. And this is a vector norm. So I can pull out the C and write this as mod C. Uh, and this mod C doesn't depend on X, so I can in fact pull it out of the max also times the max of AX. And this is uh, actually equal to mod C times norm of X A. So it, it does satisfy the homogeneity property. This by definition is the norm of A. Then triangle inequality. If I take um, A plus B, this is equal to the max of norm A plus B times X, which is equal to 
Um, okay, so this is the norm of AX plus BX. And uh, if I use the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to the max of norm AX plus norm BX. In turn, this is less than or equal to. So instead of maximizing the sum of these two quantities, I can individually maximize these two terms and add them up. That can only increase the value. So that is max of norm AX plus max of norm BX. And this by definition is norm of A plus norm of B. So it satisfies the triangle inequality and sub multiplicativity. So if I consider norm of AB, this is equal to max of, I will consider the, the other form. So I'll write it like this, AB x over norm x over all x not equal to 0. So this is equal to, so for a moment, let's say bx is not equal to 0. Then I can multiply and divide by bx, by norm of bx. And now I have the max of the product of two terms. And um, what I can do is uh, I can I can individually maximize these two terms. They're non-negative terms. So instead of maximizing the product of these two terms, I can individually maximize these two terms and then take the product of the two maxima. That will only be greater than or equal to this term. So I can write it like this. And of course, I can consider bx to be some other vector y and maximize over all y not equal to 0. So max of norm ay over norm y times max of bx over norm x. And this is equal to a okay but of course if if bx is equal to 0 then abx is also equal to 0 and so the this quantity you are trying to maximize this will be 0 and so such kinds of uh, x's can be discarded safely from this maximization problem um, they won't be the maximum. In fact, they're achieving the minimum value that this can achieve, which is zero. Okay, and the final part is that there is this uh, the statement of the theorem also says one inequality, which is that the norm of AX is less than or equal to the matrix norm of A times the vector norm of X for every A and X. We need to show that. Of course, that is trivial because um, um, if you consider norm of AX over norm X, this is norm of AX divided by norm X, and this is less than or equal to the matrix norm of A, because by definition, by definition, the, the right-hand side is the maximum value of the left-hand side over all X not equal to zero. And so for any A and X, this is true. And 
and uh, so I'll write that just for completeness. The RHS is the max of the left hand side by definition. So the maximum of a certain function is always greater than or equal to the value attained by it at any particular point. Um, so this of course assumes that x is not equal to zero, but clearly this inequality is valid when x equals zero also. Clearly this a x less than or equal to norm a norm x holds when x equals zero also. So basically this in turn, I can simply take this norm of x to the other side and hence um, norm ax is less than or equal to the matrix norm of a times the vector norm of x. Okay. And finally, if I consider um, the norm of the identity matrix, this is equal to the max over all uh, x such that norm of x equals 1 of the norm of identity times x. But this is just norm of x itself. So the constraint set says norm of x, I mean, you are maximizing over all x such that norm x equals 1 of norm x itself. And so this is equal to 1. So that concludes this proof. Any questions? Okay, so this um, this matrix norm um, is said to be induced by the vector norm. So it's also called the operator norm. Or it's also called the least upper bound norm. OK, this is uh, basically it's, uh, the least upper bound norm. This name comes from the fact that uh, the, by definition, this norm is the maximum over all x equal to 1 of the norm of ax. So um, in other words, it's the smallest upper bound you can place on norm of ax over all x satisfying norm x equals 1. Or if you look at this definition here, it's the smallest upper bound you can place on norm ax over norm x over all x not equal to 0. So that's why it's called the, also called the least upper bound norm. Okay, so basically the fact that the operator norm um, or the induced norm is a matrix norm is a general property and it's true for all vector norms. And so one way to show that some particular definition of a norm is indeed a matrix norm is to show that it, has, it is in fact induced by some vector norm. And uh, so... Um, so, so now we have another way to show that, uh, so one way to show something is a matrix norm is to show that it is induced by some vector norm. So here's an example. So now I'm going to introduce the L1 norm with three bars. So this is called the max column sum norm. So I'm going to denote this by with three bars and one next to it. 
So it's defined as max one less than or equal to j less than or equal to n of sigma i equal to one to n mod a i j. So this, um, uh, so th what I'm doing here is I am taking the sum of the magnitude of entries in each column of the matrix. So when j equals one, it's the first column. I'm taking this L1 norm of the first column and I'm looking across all columns, first, second, third, up to the nth column. I'm asking, I'm asking which column has the maximum L1 norm and I'm defining that to be the matrix L1 norm of this uh, matrix A. So this is induced by the vector norm L1. So, um, to quickly see that, if I have A equal to A1, An, then this um, norm A1 is equal to the max 1 less than or equal to I less than or equal to N of the L1 norm of AI, as I just mentioned. The this norm here is taking the max column uh, max of the L1 norms of the columns of A. The largest L1 norm among the columns of A is this matrix norm. Now, if we let x to be equal to this vector x1 through xn, then if I look at a x L1, this is equal to the L1 norm of X1 A1 plus plus X N A N. The entries of this vector X multiply the corresponding columns of A. And this in turn is less than or equal to, I'm using triangle inequality, sigma i equal to 1 to n l1 norm of xi ai so i've just taken the norm inside the summation that's triangle inequality which is equal to now xi is a scalar here so i can pull that out sigma i equal to 1 to n mod xi times the l1 norm of ai which in turn is less than or equal to so I can replace all these by the largest column norm and that will only increase the value. So sigma i equal to 1 to n mod xi times the max 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n norm of a k. And this by definition is the L1 norm as defined here, it's the max column sum. And so this is equal to the L1 norm of X, the sum of all the entries. It doesn't depend on I anymore. This can come out of the summation times the matrix norm of A. So what this means is that for any X, the L1 norm of AX is less than or equal to. So I'll write that this implies this is true for any x. The L1 norm of Ax is less than or equal to the norm of x, the L1 norm of x times the matrix norm of A. And so if I, it is also true that if I take, since it's true for every x, if I take the max over all x such that x L1 equals one of the norm of Ax, this is going to be less than or equal to the matrix norm of A. But I want to show that these are actually equal, that this is this definition that I have here is in fact induced by this. For that, I need to do a little bit more work. So now let x is equal to ek, k equal to 1, 2, up to n. So this uh, ek is the kth column of i. So then what I have is that max 
norm x equals 1 of ax is at least equal to the value it takes at one of these an example vector which is for example e1 if i take e1 that satisfies l1 norm of e1 equals 1 and i can that will give me the l1 norm of the first column of a so if i general in general if i take the kth column then it will be ak l1 okay so this is also true and so um, so then this is true for all of these k k equal to 1 2 up to n which implies that this maximum of this is greater than or equal to the max 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n of norm a k l1 which by definition is the matrix norm of a so i have shown that this max of this is less than or equal to norm of a l1 I've also shown that this max of this is greater than or equal to norm of a l1 so if i call this step a and this step d these two together imply max one ax l1 equal to So this shows that this the, the max column sum norm as I defined it is in fact induced by the L1 norm. Okay, so it's an exercise for you to show that uh, this is a matrix norm from by showing that it satisfies the four properties for a matrix norm. Okay, so that's all I have time for today. I'm actually a little over time.